one instance that I think was probably it's still to this day one of the most egregious was uh, Michael Brown. I mean, it to, they still are saying hands up, don't shoot. Mm-hmm. They are still pushing this rhetoric and agenda. And that to me has stimulated all of this fear and hate and misinformation and where you can just blatantly lie about the police and it's just acceptable. You could say that the black man had his hands up and was executed in the middle of the street. And, and that's totally fine. Even though the DOJ and, and with a black president, a black attorney general found that the officer did nothing wrong, you still can push that. And that leads to uh, the Jacob Blakes. That leads to, you know, all of these other cases. On the Rittenhouse one, um, the meme out there seemed to be that this guy is a white supremacist. And if you listen to half the media, it was basically he shot three black people. He did not shoot any black people. This was a white kid shot white people in self-defense. The whole thing was screwed up. How do we get past some of this stuff? I mean, how, how do we show people this is just not true? Well, hopefully the people who want to be informed will watch the trial, at least watch highlights of the trial and and, and come up with their own conclusion about what happens. Because when you listen to the mainstream reader, you will be deceived. Right. They make the picture of this guy. And even to this day, you see Black Lives Matter out protesting at, at, at the verdict. It's like, dude, this was a white guy who they consider a suspect. And then you have white victims. You have a white judge. You have a white prosecutor. You have a white defense team. I mean, what are y'all even talking about? This has nothing to do with black people. This has nothing to do with black in general. And if you want to make the argument and say uh, this is a white supremacy, uh, uh, a picture of white supremacy and criminal justice, which white people? The white people that died, they didn't get no ju- I mean, if you feel like they were unlawfully shot, they didn't get any justice. It's just it's just foolery. It's, it's a, They made a mockery. And the sad part is that they're willing to forego the, the rights of individuals, the constitutional rights of individuals, somebody's dignity. Martin Luther King died in an effort to help us understand that we should all be treated equally. They are foregoing Martin Luther King, all of our ancestors, all of the wars that have fought just to push an agenda, in my opinion, to sell advertisement and fear. This kid was never a white supremacist. And then they connected him to the Proud Boys. The vice president of the Proud Boys, who I think he went to jail for burning a BLM flag, he's a black man. He's the vice president or like the chair of, 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 of Proud Boys. I have interacted with Proud Boys all the time, and I've interacted with black ones, Hispanic ones. I was in L.A., and they came to one of my events to help do security um, just, just on their own. And most of them were Hispanic. And so it's like it's a, it's, a, it's a rhetoric that's being pushed, and I'm hoping that people see the hypocrisy. At, at minimum, when he's found not guilty, at least go back and say, well, why he was found out guilty. Let me go do some research instead of just blaming it on the system. So, so going into some of those other names, obviously we don't have to cover all of them, but because you hit on some of the, the names that we've heard a lot of over the last couple of years, is there one particular one, either the trial or the events that unfolded that you think was most egregious sort of in the way police were treated or the result of it or, or whatever else? Yeah, I think I, I think I mentioned a few of them. You know, I, I kind of lumped a couple of them together. Uh, one instance that I think was probably is still to this day one of the most egregious was uh, Michael Brown. I mean, it. To, they still are saying hands up, don't shoot. Mm-hmm. They are still pushing this rhetoric and agenda, and that to me has stimulated all of this fear and hate and misinformation, and where you can just blatantly lie about the police and it's just acceptable. You could say that the black man had his hands up and was executed in the middle of the street. And and that's totally fine. Even though the DOJ and and with a black president, a black attorney general found that the officer did nothing wrong, you still can push that. And that leads to uh, the Jacob Blakes. That leads to, you know, all of these other cases that I take uh, some of which I speak about in the book. That leads to Breonna Taylor, where you could just make up that she was sleeping in her bed. You could just make up she was an EMT and they hit the wrong house. When she was on the search warrant, she was involved in a criminal enterprise. And unfortunately, her boyfriend shot a cop at the door and they returned fire and she ended up dying subsequently. But you can just make up the fact that Jacob Blake was doing nothing wrong. 
when he had a knife in his hand and he was actually uh, uh, trespassed from the area. He was area restricted because he had sexually assaulted his baby mama. He shows up. She calls the police. He has a knife. They shoot him. You can just blatantly say that they shot him for no reason. Makai Bryant. Um, that gone away because they they knew the girl was trying to stab that other girl when she got shot by the police. You can blatantly say they gunned down a 16 year old girl with no jaw unarmed. And the people sitting there at the scene saw that she had the knife and they go on TV and say she was unarmed because in our society today, because of Michael Brown, you can just make up whatever you want and, and you can cry over it. I mean, that is it's crazy to me. That one, when we've all seen the video, she's got the knife. She could basically either stab the other girl or, or decapitate her in that moment. And people are going, oh, he should have shot the leg or he should have <laughs> shot or he should have used a taser, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, like, I guess at some level that sort of makes sense. Like you don't want to kill somebody, obviously. You don't want to lethally shoot somebody. On the other hand, the person who's about to be killed, they need to be saved. They, that was, to me, that one, because it was just so obvious to be angry at that police officer who's trying to save someone's life, woke up that morning, did not know he was gonna have to save someone's life, and, and yeah, he's <laughs> freaking big ass knife. He's a hero. I mean, essentially, he's a hero. I bet the parent of the girl that was gonna get stabbed think, I mean, I, I, I don't know these days, but you would imagine that the parents think that he's a hero. I mean, you gotta understand, like people have not been a police officer. The way he handled himself and the way he was able to use force against only that one person, he hit nobody else. He used the amount of force necessary to prevent her from killing the other girl. The guy was composed. He did his doggone job. Um, and, and it's a split second decision. You got to think he see the 16 year old girl, but he also see another young lady that needs her life saved. And he did what he had to do to make that happen. And LeBron James come out and, and demonize the man. And it's like, Listen, Dave, this a, it's a bigger problem than just misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Like there is an effort and an ignorance within a large population of our community, uh, the black community and the community at large, of people just being dumb. I mean, they don't do any <laughs> research. They don't look at nothing. People still think uh, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse killed black people. Like some people still are saying Black Lives Matter, he can kill them black people. If, if people, even after the dude Andrew, I think his name was Andrew Coffey, he was, he got off the same day as Kyle Rittinghouse on a self-defense case when he killed a police officer in a SWAT raid. I believe the verdict was, I mean, I, I accept the verdict. I didn't watch the trial, so I don't know if the verdict was right or not, mm -hmm. according to my opinion, but I, I, I accept it. But you gotta, they, if he was black, if Kyle Rittenhouse was black, this wouldn't happen. Well, you got a black man right here that killed a white, I don't know if the cop was white, but he killed a police officer. This is prime real estate for the racist justice, criminal justice system to throw a black man under the bus and he gets off on a self-defense charge. And come on, man, like you can't give them more evidence and they just don't receive it. Brandon, I assure you that the pandemic of dumb people has nothing to do with anyone's skin color. <laughs> you know, this is this thing is across the system right now, absolutely across the system. Do you sense that this is all ramping up again? It seems to me like, you know, we had all the, the riots and the BLM stuff and the Antifa stuff before the election. Then we sort of got the results that the mainstream wanted. Okay, Joe Biden's president. We had 10 months of nothing. Then in the last month, it seems like the race stuff is starting to bubble up again. We get the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict. We get what happened just now in Wisconsin. It feels like it's about to all start again, almost as if, and I think this is sort of what you're saying, it's kind of manipulated. This isn't all organic bubbling up from the bottom, frustrated kids. Yeah, if you think about it, these occurrences of police getting into shootings with people, or shooting people unarmed or whatever it can be, this is consistent every year. There's nothing new. Funny thing is, is when election time comes around, it's all of a sudden the biggest thing that have ever happened to us in world history. I mean, this is what they make it out to be. They did Ahmaud Arbery's case um, and Kyle Rittinghouse case almost simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And I think they did it for a purpose because you had Kyle Rittinghouse, which I think that they wished that he was found not guilty. And they could have said, look, white supremacy. And then the McMichaels, where they believe that they would be found guilty, which they did today. Um, they were going to say, look, white supremacy. These are two cases that they can compile together to cause the world to have an uproar for the next I don't know how many months.
If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.